Developing a question in my experience has been a really interesting process for teams because it might seem simple. I'm just writing down a question, but it's a, an important piece because it really is going to guide everything we do. It's going to guide our actions and uh, it's going to guide the data that we collect, the evidence that we collect, and it's going to guide our practice. So um, I try to encourage people to take an approach that's really exploratory in nature when they're developing their question. It's looking at exploring, we're looking at describing, we're looking at discovering. So I like to provide a sentence stem for people that really would help guide that process. And um, one that I think is very valuable is what is the impact of and then substituting either a classroom practice or a teacher action on and then substituting the student learning need that we've identified. So again, I'll repeat that. What's the impact of a certain action on student learning? Teacher action is, is key because sometimes I find when people, teams sit down and they're trying to come up with something common, sometimes those statements or the teacher action that they identify is quite broad in nature. Uh, for example, I've seen a team recently that I worked with that looked at uh, what's the impact of assessment for learning strategies. Well, that's pretty broad in nature, and so um, I think it's important when we think of the teacher action to do two things. Number one, uh, narrow it down to something more specific, and number two, try to ensure that that specific action is grounded in um, best evidence. Part of our process is uh, first starting with that student learning need. And so keeping focused on what is it that the students need and what are the gaps in our knowledge and understanding of how to fulfill those needs. So when you're looking at what is the teacher practice, um, you are in some ways when you're devising your question, um, coming up with some kind of a theory of what you believe. If you believe that this particular action is going to make a difference for student learning and you've identified the student learning need, you have to make sure that the action you choose is going to connect. So when we think about what is the student learning need, we're looking at the observations we make in our classroom or in our schools on a daily basis. We're considering conversations that we have with students and with teachers. And we're looking at, um, sometimes it can be um, more quantitative like grades and, and report card information. Um, but a lot of times, I don't want to say it's a gut instinct, but we as professionals do have a certain professional judgment that, that we, we just know to be true about the kids that we see every day. And um, so those observations that you're making and those conversations I think are very key when you're identifying a student learning need that is current and happening right then and there in front of you. So once you've determined what your question is going to be, the next step is to determine a theory of action. And a theory is really your beliefs about how to accomplish something. And my question for you to consider is, can you explain this in a simple and direct way to the people you work with? What is it that you believe will occur as a result of your actions? And it's an explanation of how you think the change is expected to occur. It's usually in the form of if-then statements. So if I do this, and I, if I take this particular action, then perhaps this will occur. So it's a causal relationship between two things. And sometimes we find as we enact these theories of action that these statements can be disproved. And perhaps um, sometimes our, our thoughts and our theories are justified, but sometimes we go back and we revise them based on our new evidence that we've uncovered.